Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at using ChatGPT inside of the Unity game engine using something called Spark AI. Now I did a video in the past about using ChatGPT inside of Unity, it was an experiment done by one of the Unity developers, this is a little bit different than that, this is actually a tool basically for uh, integrating ChatGPT directly inside of the Unity engine. So you could do pretty much everything we're going to see today by having an, a second window open using a browser and then copying and pasting the results over, but that is a bit of a pain. Uh, so this one is Spark AI. Uh, also, it's available right now in this uh, humble bundle that's going on, the Unity Verified Hidden Gems. You're going to notice it's available right here. So pretty much if you want to pick this one up, you're going to get, you know, uh, 27 other items for more or less free. I will have the link to this bundle down below if you want to go ahead and check it out. But that's where this guy came from. And it also needs to use a ChatGPT API key. Uh, you can sign up for this. It costs you something like $5 at the minimum that it secures against your credit card to make sure that you can pay for it. And then it's a per usage basis, but I've been playing around this for a little while now, and it's costing me like nothing. It's cost me 18 cents so far. If you stick to the programming side of things, it's dirt cheap. And you start getting to image generation, that's I think about seven cents of this 18 cents was in image generation. All right, so enough talk. Let's go and check this guy out. So it installs as a standard asset store asset. I've already installed it here. You're going to notice here in AI settings, you do have to give it your open API key over here. By the way, there is a free trial to open API for the first time you sign up if you want to go ahead and check this out. Also, something you should want to be aware of is I have deleted this key already by the time this video goes up. So don't even bother trying to use mine. Now, one of the downsides to this guy is ChatGPT API actually for uh, personal usage is only on 3.5, which is a shame because ChatGPT 4 actually generates a lot better code. Uh, so if you're using something like uh, Copilot, uh, it's actually going to generate better code than this will. Just one of those things to be aware of. Hopefully the API gets upgraded to GPT 4 soon. Uh, or if you have the professional version, you can ask to have it in, um, enabled on your API account, but I, I don't have that, unfortunately. Another thing that you're going to see here is there's this show edit scenes. You don't want that because quite frankly, it isn't available yet, but in the future, you're going to be able to actually edit your scenes using a AI, which actually sounds kind of cool. And it's more of like what that original uh, demo did for you. This shows a little bit different. This is all about integrating chat GPT functionality inside of the Unity game engine. So let's go ahead and check out what that actually looks like. Now I'm going to go ahead here. This is a failed attempt I did earlier on. And this process can be very hit or miss. It's not going to replace coders anytime soon because it just screws up so very much. But let's try something out here. So what I'm going to say is uh, create a pile of pro seed generally generated spheres. Um, yeah, that works for me. Uh, let's say a pile of 1,000 procedurally generated spheres, and we're going to go, oh, hey, go ahead, create this, and it's going to take that and then start writing the code for you. And, and again, you could do this and literally... Um, copy and paste the code over from chat GPT session. It's more the integration that you're using here. Uh, so it is randoms inside units here. This, this isn't going to work because it's using a prefab. I said procedural generation. I said, do not use a prefab. So we give it some feedback and go ahead. And then now it's going to take that advice back and let's see what it does. So, so again, that would, if you were not a programmer knowing about the code it was generating, it would have been absolutely useless for you. And now we're actually getting an error here uh, because of some special characters in here. I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and fix those characters. And now let's see if we finally get some code. So you can see this is a very much an iterative process. Let's go ahead and save that like so. And let's see if our code works. So we're going to come up here. We're going to go create an empty game object and we will attach our sphere to it like so. And let's see what our our script actually does. There you go. So we have 1,000 procedurally generated spheres. So now we can do, again, the back and forth process. So once again, I've got the script over here. I can edit this guy and then changes I want to do. It. I said, um, add a rigid body to each sphere. And then edit. And now it's going to go ahead and make the changes to the code along with whatever I want. So as you saw here from the process, you still need to know what you want it to do because it's going to do things like instead of procedurally generating the stuff, it created a prefab. Uh, here it's generating some errors in syntax. I, I don't know why it's doing that, but it says, okay, well, I, I made a syntax error. Would you like me to fix them? And then, yeah, it goes ahead and does it. Let's accept our code in here. We will save it. And now let's see if our rigid bodies work. 
Do, do, do. There you go. So you created a thousand spheres with rigid bodies in UN. So now we can do back the same thing. I'll go over here and we can do it with Shader Coder. Now, truth told, Shader Coder is pretty much the same thing as Iterative Coder, except for obviously it generates HLSL Shader. So you can basically come in here and say, uh, create me a checkerboard pattern shader and then create the shader or you could pass in an existing shader. Now, one thing I wanna point out about this tool and it's been the bane of making this video, the OpenAI APIs uh, have been problematic. So you'll have it so that it works great and then the AI should start getting really, really slow sometimes. So you gotta know the performance of this is gonna come down to how well OpenAI is, uh, is performing at the time uh, and that is definitely a problem. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is it didn't do an amazing job on the preview of the shader. You've got your typical looking Unity shader. So I have had more problems with the shader. I found the iterative coder more effective than the shader. It gives you a nice base, but you're still gonna have to modify it to get it to go where you want. Uh, a lot of times, again, this isn't going to just straight out replace a programmer. And I do find, again, when it comes to shaders, this is the area I found most problematic with this product. Uh, we do have the AI artist side of things. This is going to be the most um, ethically questionable portion because this is ultimately DALI behind the scenes. So this is trained on some artist art. Um, so if you are opposed to that, you're not going to want to use this tool. It is pretty straightforward. You come in here, you give it a description, uh, brick, wall texture as an example the number of textures you want to generate from one to four the ultimate size that you wish it for it to be and then you click generate again right now their apis for me are being a little bit slow so this can take a little bit longer than i would like it's just nature of the beast you don't know what you're going to get performance wise when it comes to the open api uh integration it's just unfortunately part of the pain point of working with it. In this case, it was pretty quick. And there you can see the generated texture. If you wanna go ahead and use this guy, basically click save and it will be added to your images folder and ready to use as a texture in your game. Uh, we have the AI debugger. The entire idea behind this is you could take a script, uh, for example, uh, script example. <laughs> okay, that'll work. Uh, and say, give it a prompt. This is too slow or, um, you know, whatever kind of optimization you wish, and then you pass it off. And actually, now it's telling me I didn't pass in a script. You could say here, this is a YAML file. <laughs> okay, so, but you get the idea behind it. Basically, you can send in a script, and if it was giving you a problem or something to that effect, uh, this can come in and make changes for you. Uh, in this case, uh, you can see that the change it's getting is you didn't pass me a script, dumbass, which is a very valid answer. I will give it credit. So these kind of, the iterative coder, the shader coder, the AI debugger, all kind of are the same-ish thing uh, in that they're, you know, back and forth programming aids. The nice thing is, again, you do have that um, the kind, kind of interaction with them so you can refine your problem until it goes away. And then finally, as something completely different, we have the AI writer. And this one here is obviously for uh, people writing stories here or descriptions. So if you want to write a description, um, a shiny chest full of swords. All right. And we'll see how well it does in describing that entity in your scene. So if you were doing, you know, an RPG and you needed to do game object descriptions, you can let uh, AI run free and wild here doing this stuff for you. Uh, one of the most interesting ones I did earlier on. So behold, the magnificent chest of swords gleaming in the light with a brilliance that catches the eye. The chest is a treasure trove of sharp, deadly blades, each one uh, crafted with precision and care. Uh, the swords within are various shapes and sizes from long and slender to short and stout, each one possessing its own unique beauty and deadly potential. The chest itself is a work of art adorned with intricate carvings and embellishments that speak to the skill and craftsmanship of its creator. Whether you are a collector, a warrior, or simply an admirer of fine weaponry, this chest of swords is sure to capture, to captivate and inspire. So everything was pretty good, except for this line. This, this line's kind of dumb. Uh, but again, this is the, the thing about these tools. It's just like with the programmer side of things. It will generate something for you and potentially something quite good. But if you do not have, you know, a, at least a decent grasp on the English language, you're going to look like a generated answer. It's, it's not like Google Translate level of bad, but you're still going to need to do a level of human finessing. So you can't just like hand something over to AI and have it write the story for you because the story will be nonsensical. But this can actually do a pretty neat job. Now, I actually did a name generator earlier on, and I love this one. So uh, I said a medieval uh, bartender with a flat shoe. Let's 
problem. Now, no idea if I spelled any of that right, but it's pretty good at dealing with my horrible spelling. Uh, and I think it gave me the name Sudsy McToots the first time, and I laughed my ass. But it was something like that. It Maybe not that, but it was close. So let's see what it comes up with as an answer for a medieval bartender with a flatulence problem. And so you can see these kind of, again, they're, they're complementary tools. So if you're having trouble coming up with NPC names or uh, lore or description or whatever, uh, so now we got Gassy Grumble Grew. I, I actually, honestly, I, I think that the, the name generator is just straight out epic. I, I, I don't know why I find these answers as enjoyable as I do, but I do enjoy them. So you can see that is basically the suite of tools here. The other thing here is this AI conversation, and honestly, I don't really fully understand what this is all about. Uh, you come in here, you can do a conversation, and you pick like the person on the other end and then you can chat with them uh, and I, I don't I don't know why you would do this um, they like Again, this is the one I don't fully understand the point behind it, uh, but it, it is a way to just generally chat with chat GPT if you wish. I, again, I don't I don't see a real world use for this. Um, so here you can see and it, it's here's one of those things you're going to notice about chat GPT in general and most AI is even if they don't know a damn thing about what they're talking about, they will answer with such confidence like they do. And I kind of get the idea that they're reviewing the original system shock here and not the new one. Uh, but I, I don't know uh, that that's an area where, again, uh, an AI will lie to you with such confidence that it's right. It's one of those things you need to be aware of when working with any particular AI tool. So, again, the process is not perfect. We saw an action here when we were dealing with uh, the coding, uh, how, you know, I said create procedural and it didn't. Then it created some errors and I had to resolve them. And if you're an expert programmer, you could probably just dump that code out, no problem at all. But if you're a decent coder uh, and you're using this to either scaffold and you're able to fix the uh, the differences there, or if you're a new coder and you kind of need to like play around and, and you know, want to experiment and so on, these tools could definitely be invaluable. Now, one of the things that is a weakness here, of course, is going to ultimately be the API underneath it can time out. That's one of those things to be aware of. If, if you're relying on this on your day-to-day -day basis and then suddenly it stops responding to you, well, that is definitely a thing that can happen. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Spark AI. Uh, 20 bucks. Again, all of this stuff can be done in another way. If you want to massage your own uh, requests properly, you, you just want to open up another browser window, do a lot of copy and paste across, you can do this with uh, you know the existing chat GPT implementations that are out there. What this is getting you is that integration directly into the Unity game engine. And of course, it's shaping the prompts to give you Unity specific answers. Uh, some of the reviews you see for it, the majority of them say that they're, of all the solutions out there for chat GPT implementation, this is the one that they ultimately like the best. Uh, if you are interested in grabbing it, it is a $20 plugin, but again, it is available in the Unity uh, Verified Hidden Gems bundle. Uh, unfortunately, it's in the top tier, so you're looking at uh, 30 USD. Uh, but if you buy this guy for $10 more than its MSRP, you're going to get all of the rest of this stuff basically for free. So if you're interested uh, in checking out ChatGPT inside of the Unity game engine, uh, Spark AI is definitely an interesting way to do it. Again, it is just an interface and uh, convenience tool for working with ChatGPT. But in that regard, I think it does a pretty good job. Now, ChatGPT is not the answer to all your dreams, but it can definitely be a useful tool to consider adding uh, to your repertoire. Also, keep in mind that if you want to use this with the API, you are going to need to subscribe. But as I said earlier on, that's pretty much dirt cheap. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.